Captain America Complete Comic Series Part 3 When Scatty possessed Cynthia Schmidt and freed the serpent, he caused seven hammers to fall to Earth so that Midgard could fear him and his legions. Steve Rogers observed the fall of the hammers and gave the order to send the Avengers to each of the crash sites 97 when Bucky was killed by Scatty at Washington, D.C. during a blitzkrieg. Steve decided to avenge Bucky and resume the title of Captain America once more 98 and while Cap, Iron Man, and Thor were sent to different locations, Cap joined the Avengers in New York to stop Scatty 99 after the Serpent broke his shield during the fight in New York and left, he moved the fight to Oklahoma, where he used Mjolnir to defeat Scatty. Captain America was captured by the Jackal and forcibly mutated into a giant spider mutant, whom the Jackal calls Spider King. As Spider King, Steve Rogers was impregnated with thousands of spider eggs in order to spread the virus that gave people spider powers. He was stopped and captured by the new heroic version of Venom, but he escaped captivity by vomiting out the now hatched mutant spiders. Ultimately he was recaptured and put into suspended animation, while Venom disguised himself as Spider King to infiltrate the Jackal's organization. When the cure for the Spider Island virus was discovered, he was returned to normal and later joined Venom in his fight against the Spider Queen, the true mastermind behind the virus. Venom stabbed her with Captain America's shield, an attack that should have killed her. Instead, she mutated into a 28-story spider monster. The two led her to Union Square, where they were joined by other heroes while Spider-Man distributed the cure to the infected New Yorkers. This weakened her enough for Kane, Spider-Man's clone, to kill her. During the funeral of Peggy Carter, Steve was attacked by an old ally he had not seen since World War II a man called Bravo. This meant that Jimmy Jankovas woke up from coma. In a secret sanatorium in Virginia, Rogers, Nick Fury, and Sharon Carter visit this man who is catatonic. Back in 1944 he helped the Allies find enemy headquarters by entering a different dimension which he called Land of Nowhere until a spy put him in comatose state, leaving Bravo and Hydra soldiers trapped there. When Jimmy woke up, Bravo managed to return to this world. Later, Hydra agents kidnapped Jimmy and it was revealed that code name, Bravo was behind the attack at the same time he was allied with Baron Helmet Zima to kill Captain America. Bravo manages to use Jimmy in a machine to open a portal to Land of Nowhere and trap Captain America, until Sharon Carter, with the help of Fury and Falcon managed to find Jimmy, and he, with his last act of will, managed to get Bravo and Steve out of nowhere. Bravo is incarcerated but the Hydra Queen, who helped him, escaped to build a new Hydra along Baron Zima. Later, Cap and his allies caught word that Hydra had been smuggling mad bombs across the city. Unfortunately, Cap was in no position to help, as he was suffering from a power decrease that returned him to his scrawny self. Fortunately, Iron Man was able to develop a cure to Steve's condition and construct a device that dispelled the Mad Bomb's effects. Afterwards, a new scourge had been attacking former villains that had entered witness protection. Cap fights Scourge, discovering that he was in fact Dennis Dunphy, Demolition Man. Hydra had brainwashed Dunphy into attacking former villains and leak witness protection information into the public. Cap tries to reason with Dunphy, but Dunphy is too unstable and Sharon is forced to kill him. Eventually, Hydra initiates its endgame by brainwashing entire American populations through news broadcasts, causing civilians to rise up against the government. Cap directs an assault on Hydra's flying island, 
where he finally goes against Bravo and his queen. Hydra's plot is foiled while Bravo is killed and the queen is left catatonic. Rogers, along with the rest of the Avengers were tracking down and fighting the lethal legion after they escaped from prison. Unnoticed by the others, Falcon was shot down by Cable. However, Steve soon noticed that Red Wing was flying alone and followed the bird to where Falcon was, in a ship container inside a Weapon X tube. Immediately Cable fought with him, and at first, Rogers had the upper hand. Eventually Cable defeated him and strapped him to an inhibitor chair, invented by Magneto, and shot Rogers with an EMP gun, knocking him unconscious, but not before revealing his desire that the Avengers not kill Hope. Eventually, Cable was brought down and Captain America was freed. As Cable was consumed by the techno-organic virus, Cyclops asked Captain America for permission to take Cable back to Utopia, which Captain America agreed to in exchange for the Avengers keeping all the weapons used against them. Sometime after the event with Cable, a Nova Corps member crashed on Earth and managed to stutter that it was coming before falling into a coma. Rogers and Iron Man later found out that the it was the Phoenix Force, and that it was coming to Earth. The heroes went to the White House to brief the President about this threat, but not before sending a team of Avengers to try and stall-slash-stop the Phoenix Force. During the briefing at the White House, Iron Man suddenly picked up a mysterious new source of the Phoenix Force on Earth. Knowing what had previously happened, Captain America and Iron Man stopped by the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning to consult with Wolverine whom replied that the X-Men believed its new host is Hope Summers. With this knowledge, Captain America went to Utopia in order to negotiate with Cyclops. He asked that Hope be turned over to him and Avengers for protective custody. Cyclops refused to hand over Hope since he and the other mutants believe she was their messiah, and that the Phoenix Force would allow Hope to fully restore the mutant race. Cyclops then blasted Steve with an optic blast, causing Steve to give the order for the Avengers to invade Utopia. The Avengers seemingly defeated the mutants of Utopia although Hope manages to flee. The surrender however turned out to be a ruse and Cyclops teleported away from Utopia with several powerful mutants. The Avengers started searching for Hope, as well as the X-Men. After Wolverine helped Hope with her journey he betrayed her, and told Steve and the Avengers where she was. The Avengers arrived on the moon to confront her and take her into custody but are greeted by the X-Men who have also arrived to claim Hope. Before a fight can start a wounded Thor fell from the sky, closely followed by the Phoenix. When Iron Man used a disruptor in his Phoenix Killer armor on it, the cosmic entity wasn't killed but divided into five parts which possessed each one of the X-Men present at the scene the Phoenix possessed X-Men started changing the world into a better place for living, but knowing that Phoenix's ultimately destructive nature would bring chaos, Steve and the Avengers tried to get hope from Utopia in order to use her knowledge about the Phoenix against it. After the Scarlet Witch helped them against the X-Men, Previously having visions of the Phoenix destroying Earth, Cyclops decided to hunt down every Avenger. The Thunderer offered the Avengers to hide in K Unluan, as well as to train Hope to face the Phoenix, because of his past experience with the Phoenix host and Iron Fist Fungi, and the prophecy of the Phoenix bringing chaos to Earth. Before the entire Avengers could teleport to K Unluan, Namor attacked where they were hiding, Wakanda, along with a full army of Atlanteans. After defeating Namor with the price of the partial destruction of Wakanda, the Avengers teleport to K Unluan, in order to help Hope to train to face the Phoenix. 
the Avengers were attacked by Cyclops who now possessed half of the Phoenix. He made quick work of anyone that opposed him but was defeated by Hope who in an act of desperation combined the powers of the Iron Fist, Scarlet Witch's chaos magic and Shao Lao's flames to teleport Cyclops to the moon. The Avengers then teamed up with several X-Men who had realized that Cyclops and Emma had completely lost control. Together they attacked Cyclops and Emma and gained the upper hand until Cyclops was forced to take the final piece of the Phoenix from Emma, making him the sole host. The complete Phoenix proved too much and finally turned him into Dark Phoenix. The Avengers fought Summers around the world with the help of the X-Men and Nova, as well as trying to contain the chaos the gigantic force produced around Earth but who finally managed to defeat him were Scarlet Witch and Hope. The Phoenix left Scott and possessed Hope, but she managed to control it, repairing all the damage Scott caused on the planet, and finally, using the powers of the Scarlet Witch to manipulate reality, she destroyed the Phoenix Force with a final blast of energy which caused millions of people around Earth to manifest mutant powers. Cyclops was finally incarcerated, and Steve accepted the Avengers should have done more to help mutants, and not allowed the world to hate them. As a result, he started planning a new sub-team of Avengers in hopes of unifying mutant and humankind. He chose Havoc to lead his team and become the new face to represent mutants as Professor X and Cyclops once were. Their first threat was the return of Red Skull, who usurped Professor X's brain to provide himself telepathic powers, which he would use to provoke citizens of New York into a mass assault against mutants, or anyone who could be one, and force Scarlet Witch and Rogue to allow themselves to be attacked. With the help of the S-Man Honest John, he managed to even manipulate Thor. However, Red Skull's skills were still erratic, and couldn't completely control Captain America, an attack against him was enough of a distraction to lose control of Rogue and Scarlet Witch. After being overpowered by the rest of Uncanny Avengers, Red Skull decided to escape, but promised a return. In the aftermath, both Rogue and Scarlet Witch joined the team. After battling a villain called the Green Skull, an eco-terrorist, Cap meets up with Sharon in a lone alley. Walking to a subway station, Steve and Sharon enter a secret elevator that leads to a subway car hidden within the station. The car then disappears into a flash of light, entering a mysterious realm and also injected with an anesthetic. He finds himself strapped into an operating table. In that moment, Arnim Zola appears before him, welcoming Steve to the Dimension Z. Steve frees himself from the table and jumps through a window and escapes with a baby, only to realize later that the baby was Zola's son. Cap then tries to escape Dimension Z on a jet, but is shot down by enemy forces. Later, Cap and Zola's son, named Ian, are trapped in a desert-like environment in Dimension Z suddenly, Steve is attacked by two of Zola's mutates. Steve manages to fight them off, but is later captured with Ian and encounter the Frox, an alien-like species living in Dimension Z, and Steve becomes partially mind-controlled by Zola because of an implant. Steve then begins training Ian in how to throw his shield properly and become very close, even to the point where Steve tells him that Zola is his real father later on as Steve and Ian return to the Frox's hideout and are ambushed by Zola's forces there. Steve grabs a blade and stabs himself in the chest, destroying Zola's implant, while Ian is being held captive Steve then infiltrates Zola's stronghold and kills all the mutates guarding its gates and has reached the tunnel that brought him to Dimension Z. Steve briefly considers returning to Earth and getting help from the Avengers, 
but he cannot leave Ian to his fate and crawls into the waste tunnels in order to infiltrate the fortress. Jet and Steve briefly fight each other in the fortress, but she reveals the truth behind Zola and Daya and they agree to work together to stop Zola. However Ian, fully brainwashed by Zola, shoots Steve in the back Steve later battles Ian again and urges him to make his own decision. However, Ian is shot by Agent 13, through the neck from behind and falls into an abyss below Sharon later reveals that she rigged Zolandaya to detonate. Meanwhile, Jet Black is fighting her father and is losing until Cap arrives and intervenes. Jet Black then frees the frog's prisoners of Zola. Later, Zola is impaled and savaged by Cap and finally on the verge of destruction and complete shutdown. The group later prepares to detonate Dimension Z as they leave so that Zola's mutates will not invade and infest the Earth. But Jed Black punches Sharon, steals her detonator, and races off on a sky sled. Later on after Cap and Sharon pursue her, Zola tells his daughter that she has failed him again. He then shoots deadly eye beams. Sharon almost falls to her death but Captain America grabs her hand. Sharon then tells Steve that she has a plan that they can still detonate Dimension Z and return safely to Earth. She slips from Cap's grasp, telling him that she loves him. Cap urges Jet to take their sky sled, but it is too late. Jet and Cap return back to New York and Steve later cries over his loss of Sharon.